Why do you want to be part of making a Hanto? I had the time of my life writing Moana uh, with the Moana team, and I just, I really wanted to be a part of a Latino-themed Disney animated musical. I just thought my whole life's been preparing me for this. I've wanted to write musicals ever since Sebastian the Crab started singing Under the Sea, uh, and I was thrilled to be in from the beginning uh, and be so involved in the storytelling process uh, and contributing to songs to this incredible movie. What aspects of Colombia and Colombian music inspired you as a songwriter? Um, what was so exciting about visiting Colombia and doing a deep dive, a deep research dive into the musical diversity and and uh, and different sounds that make up Colombian music was that it was like going to my cousin's house, you know, as someone with roots in Puerto Rico and Mexico, there are things that my music shares with Colombia and there are things that really make Colombia distinct. And the things that make it distinct were the most exciting things to write to. The fact that accordion is at the center uh, of a lot of the music to have a Disney heroine playing accordion and singing the opening number of a Disney movie was really exciting to me. To write a um, in the style of Carlos Vives and then have the great global hero Carlos Vives sing that song was really exciting. To have a Disney I Want song that is in three-quarter time because so much of the folkloric music we heard from Colombia was in three-quarter time and on guitar and on tiple. Um, again, writing to that specificity always sort of unlocked what the characters needed to express. Speaking on that, Many of the characters have magical gifts, but we realize that's not always easy. Can you explain how music, music helps convey this idea and give an example? Sure. Um, you know, I think that the everyone except Mirabelle in this family has a magical gift. And one of the things that was important to Jared and Charisse as, as the screenwriters was that the gifts be an extension of the personalities of the characters themselves. So if Isabella is the golden child, literally flowers are blooming at her feet and she can make flowers grow. Um, you know, Luisa, uh, her sister, is is super strong. And, and the fun for me was finding the musical equivalents of those gifts and then turning them on their head when I needed to because no one is defined by their gifts. No one is solely defined by one thing. So when Luisa's song Surface Pressure starts, it's as tough as she is. It's this tough reggaeton song. It's like diamonds and platinum. I find them, I flatten them, I take what I'm handed. You know, it's just like incredible. I break what's demanded, but there's also this pressure and there's also this, you flip it on its head and you reveal the soft underbelly and the incredible vulnerability she feels and the incredible um, responsibility and burden that is. Um, so the, the fun was always in establishing these themes for these characters and then flipping them and seeing what, what is the other side of that gift? What is the other side of that theme um, so that we can see each other more fully? What is an I want song? What are examples from the Disney classics? What song did you write for Encanto that fulfills that piece of the story? An I want song is that moment in a Disney movie where our hero or heroine expresses their secret heart's desire and it's the journey they're gonna go on for the rest of the film. And what it really is, is, is the most intimidating spot in any Disney movie um, because the legacy of Disney I Want songs is so strong. Now, Disney didn't invent the I Want song. You know, there's an I Want song in Wicked. There's an I Want song in uh, in a lot of musicals, but Disney's got a pretty good lineup, whether it's Part of Your World from Little Mermaid, Reflection from Mulan, Out There from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, you know, they're Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, which is one of my favorite uh, recent ones. Um, it's an intimidating list. And the hardest part about writing an I Want song for Disney is you know the playlist this is going on after the movie comes out. And you wanna be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with those incredible immortal tunes. Um, and so it's always the hardest one to write. Um, I remember locking myself in my childhood bedroom to write How Far I'll Go from Moana because that was the only way I could sort of clear out the clutter um, of, you know, 
the shadow of let it go <laughs> to, to be able to write it. I had to really reconnect with my 16 year old self to write that tune. And, and the same was true um, with uh, Encanto, the song in that spot, it's called Waiting on a Miracle. And it's Mirabelle who has been holding in a lot and she has been, she's proud of her family, she loves her family, and she knows deep down she isn't seen in the same way as the rest of her family and she wants to be seen. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of false starts and wrong songs to get to just the right song. And, and then it's taken to the next level by Steph Beatrice's incredible performance. Um, she just sang the heck out of it. And, um, and, and that's really what I think makes it soar. What is We Don't Talk About Bruno about and how did the song come together on the big screen? We Don't Talk About Bruno is a family song in the middle of Encanto. And I pitched it because every family has the things we talk about at the dinner table and the things we don't, but we still talk about. We just can't talk about it in front of Abuela or in front of mom. Um, and I wanted to write a song like that um, where everyone says, we don't talk about that and then proceeds to talk about it. <laughs> um, it also afforded us an opportunity to hear from some of the characters in our movie who we don't necessarily have the real estate to have a solo song from them, but I wanted to hear what they sounded like. I wanted to hear from their themes. And so the wonderful surprise of Camilo's section of the song where he's made it into a ghost story and he's changing shape and turning into uh, Bruno as he's describing him. Um, Dolores, who has this magical hearing ability, um, and so she's the quietest one and she actually talks the fastest and she actually has the most insight on the family dynamic between Bruno and the rest of the family because she listens to everything, but no one really asks her opinion, but she really knows everything. Um, it was a joy to take dictation from Dolores when her musical voice emerged. And then, I, you know, the, the other one that's really delicious for me is um, uh, Peppa and Felix, who were at the beginning of the song, and they're telling a story about how Bruno ruined their wedding, but they keep getting in each other's way telling the story. At one point, uh, Peppa sings, you telling this story or am I? And Felix goes, I'm sorry, maybe they'll go on. That's exactly my parents telling every story. Uh, and it was very nice to be able to sneak that into the movie. <laughs> <clears throat> what does Carlos Vives bring to the song Colombia, Me, Encanto? I, I think for so many of us, uh, Carlos Vives has been an incredible musical ambassador on behalf of Colombia. Um, even folks who don't know about Colum the specifics of Colombian music know who Carlos Vives is. He just writes these immortal, beautiful songs and these beautiful vallenatos. And, um, and he is a life force and an 18 time Grammy winner. And um, it was a dream to, to get to work with him uh, on this song. I was so proud of his rendition of the song I wrote um, and how he brought it to another level with his musicians and his band. Um, they just, they, they took it to a place I, I never could have dreamed of. What does Dos Horn Portitas a first in your songwriting career, how did the song extend beyond the film storytelling? Yeah, um, Dos Oruguitas literally means two caterpillars. And this was a moment in the movie where we reveal a painful bit of family history, and it didn't feel right for a character to sing about it in real time. Every other song in the movie, um, actually with the exception of Colombia Me Encanto, which is playing at the party, is a character singing about what they're going through. And what I wanted to do for this moment was write a folk song that feels like it's always existed. And I wanted to use nature imagery because so many of the great folk songs go to beautiful nature imagery. I was inspired by the animators. The animators had this beautiful butterfly motif throughout the film of this, the flame of a candle turning into a butterfly and that butterfly turning into a miracle. And I just remember thinking, well, every butterfly is kind of a miracle when you think about it. Every butterfly is a caterpillar who has to destroy their own selves to become their next self. And so I had the idea of a song about two caterpillars in love who are scared to let each other go, but they have to let each other go because you can't become the next version of yourself unless you let go. And that was such a beautiful, natural metaphor for what the Madrigal family is going through. They are 
a family that loves each other, but they're all holding on too tight. And, um, and so that was um, really exciting to find that. And um, I, I went far out of my comfort zone in terms of the, the vocabulary in Spanish I needed. I'm, I'm much more fluent in English than in Spanish, but I felt very strongly I needed to write it in Spanish because that's how I would unlock it. And, and that's exactly what happened. And I'm, I'm really proud of it. And then of course, Sebastián Yatra's beautiful rendition of the song in the movie takes it to a whole other place. Great. Thank you.